Greetings. This your girl, Minister Asia. I'm back for another video. Today, I'm like Salento. You already know what it is. When you see this prayer cloak, you know we going in on the ambassador's hour. And for those of you who may not know who Silento is, I sincerely apologize. I've been raising teenage boys for two and a half years, from like 2014 to the end of 2016. And I was all into their things and they were all into mine. Um, Silento is a rapper who had like, to me, a one hit wonder. But you know, he had that popular song, Watch Me Whip, Nay Nay. And so you already know what it is. Let's go ahead and say our mantra and get into the contents of this video. For I know who I am and whom that I stand, whom empowers me to be. I am an ambassador for Christ. This is the hour to recognize me. I see the delay on this video. That's a distraction of the enemy. Every time I put on this prayer cloak, demons begin to distract and to deter because they hate when I get in my place, isn't that something? But we're gonna forge on in this thing and we're going to break the silence today. That's the title of this video. I have decided to do more of the behind the scenes things on the camera instead of just coming on, getting straight into the content in the video. I wanna do the whole wrap around thing because there are some people, like I said in previous videos, that will never go into a sanctuary. They will never come to, um, our meetings but they'll get on youtube they'll watch a video and perhaps something that the ambassador's hour does or says will prompt them it will teach lead god and direct them to actually activate their own mantle and get into their own giftings into their own calling and be everything that god has predestined and ordained for them to do i shared the other day one of maurice's favorite worship songs my river but this song, the very first time I heard it, it hit my spirit. It shook something in me, something that had been concrete in my spirit. We understand that as Christians, we go through things. We go through seasons in our life. And I went through an immense season in my life where my heart was so hardened. It was so hard. It was hard as a brick. You couldn't chisel it with a jackhammer. And it wasn't until I began to listen to this song and to take ownership for my part in my tragedies, my part in my um, losses, my part in my failures. And then he began to take my pain and cause it to be praise and worship. And I really began to worship my way out. So the spirit that I'm combating in this hour and in this season on the ambassador's hour is the spirit of depression. And um, so I'm going to play this song i'm gonna go in i'm going to do a line upon line and precept upon precept teaching on first corinthians um it might be second corinthians chapter 12 i wrote it down and then i'm going to give you some nuggets some wisdom keys and i'm going to be out of your hair so let's get into this in the silence by jason upton Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, God. I give you the glory right now, God. We're breaking every spirit, God. When I know you really don't. My God, Jesus. I tell you, I follow. When I know I really won't Cause I'd rather stand here speechless Silence is what's true for And my fears can hear out of all in your way And in the silence Yay, God. 
God. You are speaking, my God, Jesus. I am burning deeply, God. Send down your consuming fire right now, God, to burn away all of the sin, Lord God, to burn away every hurt and every pain, Lord God. You are not a masi, God. God. We worship you on the ambassador's hour, God. We use our heavenly prayer language, Lord God, because it is the perfect prayer language, Lord God, to remove every burden, destroy every yoke, to break every chain in the realm of the spirit of God. The spirit of depression has been running rapid, Lord God. There are clinical diagnoses and cl clinical terminology that was dated way back to even 1921. I can see biblical references and people who struggle and suffer with the spirit of depression, Lord God. And I know that you would not have your people bound, God. So I'm praying them free, Lord God. As we forge through this faithful 40, God, and as we pull on heaven, God, we are going to break every chain in the spiritual realm, God. The people will not be bound by the spirit of depression, Lord God. They will not stay in a sane asylum, Lord God. And they will not be in mental hospitalization, God. They will not speak to themselves and hallucinate, Lord God, and dream and have many and all this type of depression, God. I see the spirit. I call the spirit a spirit, and I come for him, Lord God. I don't even want my enemy to be bound by depression, Lord God. The enemy has come. He has done his job because the Bible depicts that the thief comes it's not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but you have come that we may have life and have it more abundantly, Lord God, and I don't see abundance in some of the people's lives, Lord God, and it's time for us to take it back, Lord God. You said from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it back by force, oh God, and I come forcefully pulling on heaven right now, Lord God, to pull down the joy that the people deserve, Lord God, to pull down the peace, Lord God, that the people deserve, Lord God, to bring that harmonious and melodious worship back to the heart of the worshiper, Lord God, to bring back the boldness and the clarity and the understanding and the crisp understanding as they read and write and divide the word of truth. Lord God, so many people, her minds, her mouths have been shut up, Lord God. The word of God has been shut up because the spirit of depression has ran rapid has plagued and gagged your people, Lord God. But today I'm pulling the gags out of their mouth and the gag is the enemy is going down in this area. I decree and declare they're coming from a place of obscurity, of darkness, of lowness, of brokenness, of sadness, of barrenness. And today is the day of deliverance. I'm bringing illumination. I'm shining the light of the Holy Ghost on the spirit of depression. I decree and declare that wherever you are, you've been in that place too long and you're going get up today. Today is your day of their reckoning. The Lord is going to stand you up in the realm of the spirit. You're going to be able to walk boldly and stand tallly and be exactly what God has called you to be. Today is your hour to be the woman of God, the man of God, the boy of God, the girl of God, the child of God that he has fashioned and designed for you to be before the foundation of the earth I use my mantle and I superimpose the Holy Spirit that is resting, ruling and abiding in my life upon you today. This fresh anointing to remove every burden to destroy every yoke. This is your day. Today is your day of deliverance. You shall not stay in that place anymore. And I decree and declare that God is releasing angels from all hemispheres of the globe. From the north, south, east, and the west. He's charging his angels over this situation. He's sending the angels of God to minister on this platform. He's saturating this atmosphere. He's charging it even right now to pray, to remove every burden, to destroy every yoke, to bring the anointing. It is the anointing. Of According to Isaiah 10 and 27, that removes the burdens and destroy the yokes in this hour and in this season, the spirit of the living God is going to come to your house wherever you are and pick you up from that load of bar and dark place. You are coming out today. I decree and declare that today is your day of freedom. No longer will you stay depressed. Today, the Lord is coming and you're going to take his yoke upon you for his burdens are easy and his yoke is light. You're going to learn of him. You're going to enter into 
to his rest. You're going to activate the mantle that is on your life. You're going to actualize and activate your spiritual gift is you're going to walk in Holy Ghost boldness. You're going to be everything God always predestined and ordained for you to do. And it is so. I decree it and I declare it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let me take this song back and um, minister to you from the words. Because when I first heard this song, I'll tell you the story. I always like to tell stories because people need to be able to um, relate to what you have in your life. They need to see, hey, you've been walking with the Lord for 22 years and you struggled in this area. God has no respect to persons. If he delivered you, he can deliver me. So one particular night last year, um, I was sitting in the car in Walmart parking lot. And Maurice had gone in to um, shop. And he loves Jason Upton. That's his favorite worshiper. He plays the playlist all day, night, every time. And so when I was sitting there in the car, when he said this first word, it just hit me like, wow, that's it, God. This story is an accurate depiction of what I have been going through since 2011. Isn't that something? So let me play the song. It says this. He says, I'm tired of telling you, you have me, when I know you really don't. When I know you really don't. I'm tired of telling you I follow, when I know I really don't. I follow, because I knew I liked my sin. I knew I wanted to go back to those things, like a dog returning to her vomit. Mm-hmm. And then here I got stubborn. I got stubborn in the kingdom. Because I'd rather stand here speechless. I ain't got nothing to say. No words. With no great words to say. Because if my silence is more truthful. And my ears can hear how to walk in your way. In the silence, God is speaking. I didn't want to confess the word because I never, I like New Wine. New Wine is one of my favorite rap artists in the kingdom of God. And he's like, I never wanted to be the kind of man that told God I, that taught that junk and not be about it. I never have been fake. Never have, never will. If I'm doing a work and I'm obeying and I'm fighting, then I'm going to be out front, bold, and flamboyant doing it. If I'm not, I will sit my butt down. I will not spew any demonic and satanic forces on people because I'm erroring and because I'm sinning and because I'm in questioning and I'm perplexing. And I will just be quiet. I'll sit down and I'll keep silent and I'll listen and I'll be taught and I will allow the word of God to wash me. I'll get in a place of humility when I go before the throne of grace, when I'm not sitting on here, I lay on the floor in this place, in this arena where I teach the ambassador's hour and I lay on the floor and I put my face to the floor and I just say to the Lord, God, I'm humbling myself under you. I abase myself in your presence. Sometimes God won't let me speak to him. Sometimes I have to just be so silent because see, we'll lie. We'll say this, God, I'm coming out. I ain't going to touch it no more. I ain't going to do this no more. I'm not going to do that no more. Then the next day we're back doing it. But sometimes we have to just lay in God's presence and we have to be silent and we have to listen because our silence is more truthful. And when we're silent, then our ears can hear how to walk in God's ways. And so when I heard this song, I was like, my God, this is a direct depiction of where I've been. Something happened to me in 2011. And I'll tell you as I get into the contents of this video. So today we're talking about breaking the silence. The li literal definition for the word breaking means this. To interrupt. I just had to stop right there. When you break something, you interrupt. You interrupt, separate, or cause to separate into pieces or a result as a result of a blow, shock, or strain. So when you break something, you interrupt, separate, or cause to separate um, into pieces as a um, 
result of a blow, shock, or a um, strain. Right now, we're going to put strain on Satan's kingdom. We're going to demolish his kingdom. I'm going to shine the light of God on him so bright that it will shatter his plan and his devices to utter pieces and shamble him. The devil came for one thing, but God is going to turn it into Asia's good. What the enemy planned for evil, God is turning into good for all of our lives, ambassadors. The devil came to steal, kill, and to destroy our lives, to take our peace, sift us as wheat. But today is a day of reckoning. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you right where you are and capture you. And even if your conscience has been seared, the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the consuming fire is going to burn away even the residue and remnant of that sin. I decree and declare today that we are breaking the silence. We're going to tell the truth. We're going to tell our testimony and we're going to tell our story. In this hour, God is requiring that we stand before him naked and unashamed. As we break the silence, we interrupt, separate, or cause to separate into pieces, severing ties from the enemy, breaking every chain and every fetter and every device that the enemy meant, sent, and formulated to keep you bound, to keep you down, to oppress you, to repress you, and to keep you in an endless, perpetuating cycle of divisive sin. But today, all those patterns of destruction, everything that you have been in is being broken. I come with no floss. I come with no fluff. Today is a day of reckoning. You shall stand up, man of God. You shall stand up, woman of God, to decree and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. When we're breaking the silence, we have to understand what silence is. Silence is complete absence of sound. The complete absence of sound is not just your voice not speaking. See, that's okay. When you lay in the presence of God and you're quiet, there's a difference between quiet and silent. When you're quiet, you're not saying nothing. You're just listening. You're silent so his voice can speak. But in this silence, it's not a silence that came from God. The silence that we're breaking is the silence of the enemy. That he has sent so much hurt, so much pain, so much offense. The spirit of offense. Oh yeah, I see you spirit of offense. And I call you out. You are a spirit and you shall be illuminated. And I decree and declare that you are bound. Everything I bind in earth is bound in heaven. I'm operating under my mantle. I don't care who don't like it. It's an hour and it's a season for total deliverance in every area of our lives. So when we come against this silence, we ain't talking about that God kind of silence where he shuts you up to make you obey. Like, um, I want to tell you this. Back with um, Zachary, Zacharias, Zacharias, Elizabeth's husband, he was muted by God because he was a priest. He went in to offer the incense. And then when God told him he was going to do an end suddenly in a miracle in his life, he didn't believe because he was old, because he never seen it in his life, because he never experienced it, because he had been knowing his wife all those years and she had never conceived. He thought that God wasn't God. And before he could speak against and destroy and kill the very Holy Ghost filled forerunner, John the Baptist, God muted him and shut his mouth up. So that he could not speak against the work that God had to do in Elizabeth, which would cause her cousin Mary to come five months later to arrive. She who had been through an immaculate conception by the Holy Spirit came in whose baby Elizabeth had the Holy Ghost in him, John the Baptist, which caused Jesus to leap in Mary's womb. Mary, no, Jesus called, Jesus caused 
John the Baptist to get the Holy Ghost in Mary's womb. But because Zacharias couldn't see what all God was doing before he ran his big soup coolers and he ran his mouth, God had to mute his mouth so that he couldn't speak against the very work that God was doing. Now that's silence. That's a good silence. That means shut up, sit back and watch what God's doing. You don't have anything to do with what I'm doing in my ambassador right now. Keep your mouth off of it. But this silence that I'm breaking today here on this platform without a broad vernacular, without eloquent speech, without all of the extras that people who don't want, who want to be aroused in their flesh and are not catering to the spirit, they're not going to like this video. They're going to click off this video. They won't share this video. But today I'm breaking the silence of the enemy. And this is the kind of enemy that comes in that sees you working in the kingdom of God, sees that you have a grave impact, sees that you are an intercessor and sees that your prayers get to heaven, that you have the power to recalibrate systems and to reorganize and structure things in the realm of the spirit. And because he doesn't like the fact that you have such a grave bearing on his kingdom, he wants to send you into a grave depression. Pressure. He wants to oppress you, repress, antagonize, harass you so that you will shut up. He wants to muzzle you and put a bit in your mouth and control your tongue and keep you from speaking the truth because he understands that your tongue, death and life lies in the power of the tongue. And if he can shut you up, he can keep you silent. He can allow demonic and satanic forces to plague the body of Christ. But in this hour and in this season, I am breaking the silence. No longer will I be shut up. I will decree and declare what thus says the Lord, whether people are like to accept it or not, because I'm releasing it in the atmosphere and as I release it in the atmosphere God sends angels to fight angelic beings and forces go throughout this ge every geographical region because I'm called to the nations and as I release this app this video as I speak it here in Perry Georgia it takes atmosphere it takes um relevance and place in the realm of the spirit and God sends it to whatever geographical re region is needed on all four hemispheres of the globe. See, I'm breaking the silence that has been in the body of Christ. I'm talking about taboo subjects. I'm bringing up all hurts, pains, offenses, because it always has been and always will be true that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So if I tell my testimony and I speak the truth, people in this world will and shall overcome. I'm breaking the silence, that debilitating silence, that the thing is so deep and the pain is so deep. It's so hard to speak about it to anyone. You mourn over that thing. You cry over that thing. You relive that thing. You rehash that thing. Every time you think about it, every time you wake up, every time you you go to try to move on, it keeps pulling you back. Every time you go to try to find peace and joy and happiness, it takes your smile. Every time you try to go forward in the things of God, okay, I'm going to get past this. I'm going to move on. We take one, for, one step forward, then you end up running a whole yard back. You get faster than Cam Newton. Oh, no, not Cam. Yeah, my favorite quarterback. Can't believe he came out, but I come against that too in the name of Jesus. But what I'm saying is, and I'm staying on task, I love sports sometimes. But anyway, I have to get really back in. Complete absence of sound. That means that when there's a complete absence of sound, that means not only aren't you speaking, you can't hear the voice of the Lord. You cannot hear what the spirit of the living God is saying unto the church. You are the church. You are the church. And you will not be able to hear when you are in a gulf of silence that has been sent by the enemy. You will find yourself having obeyed the word to the letter, having spoken to the rain. The rain didn't come for three and a half years. They haven't spoken to the rain and it rained. Having dosed altars with water and stood up and commanded the people, how long will you be between two opinions? If God be God and Baal be Baal, then you get five tribes of water. You throw it on the altar. Then you come against every Jezebel and you stand firm. You stand flat footed. Then next thing you know, you hiding under a juniper tree, whimpering and crying 
asking where the God is, where the Lord is in your situation. But in this hour, in this season, we're going to be like we were on Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel. We're not going to be like Elijah was when he was under the juniper tree because we do understand that there are more people than us that they have not bowed to Baal. There are more people to, than us that aren't going into the Illuminati secret society selling their soul so they can get money, riches, fame, houses. But there are some people who are really, truly believing in the word of God, un unhindered, uncontaminated, uncompromised, and they are standing firm and flat-footed. And so we come today as I being one of those people, despite my sins, like I told you, God caught me anyway. And I'm using my mantle, I'm using my platform, and I'm using this hour, this season, and this ability, slow camera or not, to get the word out and I'm breaking the silence because I am the church and I can hear what the spirit of the living God is saying to the church. I have repented. I'm coming back to um, returning to my first love and I'm returning to the height from which I followed and I'm doing